Hey, what's up everybody? We want to welcome you to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Daily Recap, where we give you a recap of all of the hot topics that we covered that day. You can catch them in their long format and also catch it fully streaming for free on Apple Podcasts. About a year and a half ago, a year ago, uh, JJ Reddick made a lot of headlines uh, for all the wrong reasons. Why? Because he went on Undisputed, not Undisputed, on ESPN First Take, uh, and he, had, he got into this back and forth with Chris Mad Dog Russo, who has always made it clear uh, that he's an old school guy. He's a sports historian. Uh, he was basically calling out players from the era of Bob Cousy and all of that, playing against firemen and plumbers, uh, you know, calling them all of this stuff. And it was something that irritated some of the legends of the NBA. And you have players like Jerry West, uh, Bob Cousy, Dominique Wilkins. Uh, and others, Michael Cooper and others, coming out and basically calling J.J. Reddick a bozo uh, for the comments that he made, right? So what happened? <clears throat> Excuse me. So what happened? Uh, so yesterday, uh, J.J. Reddick made an, appearment, uh, appear, <laughs> made an appearance on the podcast called uh, Flagrant, very popular podcast, and it has 1.57 million uh, subscribers. Now, when the podcast initially came out, uh, I actually didn't watch it, but one of our viewers sent the, sent the, sent the, this clip to me. He was like, Hey, you know, tune into this podcast, go to the 40 minute, uh, Mark and check out what JJ Reddick had to say. Uh, so yesterday I decided to do that. Um, and during that segment, they were talking about this whole, we're done with the nineties thing. And they were asking JJ Reddick to clarify the comments, uh, that he made about, players in the past, them being plumbers in the 90s and all of that. And would you believe J.J. Reddick essentially doubled down on his nonsense that he essentially spewed on ESPN first take and those comments, which were the comments that ended up getting him in trouble with some of the, the legends uh, in NBA history. So what we want to do is we want to play the conversation that they had on the on the podcast uh, Flagrant and then want to come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to this conversation here. It's going to go. Have you seen the what we've done with the 90s? Joe, oh, it's, it's, I hate this. Who's paying for this? This is this is your podcast co-host. There's a, oh my God. There's, a there's a media smear campaign out there for Michael Jordan, and uh, there's all these people that are like taking these clips and saying how like how trash basketball was in the '90s, yeah. as if we didn't yeah. watch it. Yeah, you thought it was trash? No. So just, MJ does whatever he wants now. And they tried to say MJ doesn't have a left hand, and then they broke it down, and it's like he goes to the left just as much as he goes to the right now, like. This is a smear campaign. This is a smear campaign. I don't love this it. This is... I, 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 you know, because of uh, some things that have happened on First Take and uh, The Old Man and Three, which is my other podcast, because of some things that I've said, yeah. I get to have this <laughs> reputation as like destroying the older generation. And it's like... Every, what did you call them? Every, Janitors? Plumbers and firemen. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the, everything I've ever said is no, it's, based, it's, you've it's been based smeared. in fact. What are the facts here? The in the Michael 19, Jordan's in the, a fireman? No, in the, in the no, I was talking specifically about the players that Bob Cousy played against in the 1950s. Okay, this is different. In in the 1950s, yeah. nearly every professional athlete in every sport was white. Had, <laughs> what? Don't get me started on the quota. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Talk to us about the Utah Jazz. Go. Uh, no, no, don't get me started on this. But every, every professional athlete, not every professional, but most professional athletes, had a summer job. They didn't train year round like we did. They they literally were plumbers yes. and firemen and welders and farmers. Yes. Oh, I don't know. So it was a matter of fact that yeah, he was. Yeah, but you also against... say that I I think the implication is they're less athletic, they're less good. Bob well, they Cousy were less also, good. Let's be let's be in the 1950s. But that's just a matter of what they got paid, and they had to be. They weren't like, hey, 100%. I want to be a plumber and I'll play basketball on the side. You know what I mean? Like they're very good basketball 100%. players who had to make ends meet, I, as was Bob Cousy. I I can I can absolutely I, I've I've been so consistent on this, yeah. and yet people are like, "You trash prior generations." I've been consistent on this, but Bob the Cousy, first time I ever commented on any of this was right after the top seventy-five list came out. Yeah, and you were pissed that and Dwight Howard wasn't on. And all I said was, "We should absolutely celebrate the greatest players in every era, what they accomplished, who they were as players. We should celebrate that." But you can't tell me that, you know, Dolph Shays was a better basketball player than Tracy McGrady or Kyrie Irving or Clay Thompson or Dwight Howard. It's, just, mm. it's not it's not based in any sort of fact. Now, relative to the competition, you can make an argument, right? Relative yeah. to the competition, which is what I've been consistent on. Celebrate what players were able to do in their era. So I get knocked for, you know, I trashed Larry Bird. Dominique Wilkins has been on like 19 different podcasts talking about how stupid I am. 
for saying that Larry Bird is a top 10 player of all time and one of the greatest shooters ever. So what? But objectively, he's not a top five three point shooter. He's just not. Well, wasn't there? And no the argument f- against that is, oh, well, if he had played in today's era, he would be a top five. What? That doesn't even make sense. That's not based in reality or fact. Wait, wait, but was there a three point line early in his career? Three point line was 1979, 1980, I believe was the first year of the three point line. And Chris it- Ford made the first three pointer ever. But when does he come in the league? Bird. Uh, he was the class of 79, wasn't he? Okay, so right, so he's yeah. in it. So the game is a little different, but you're saying the data doesn't show that he's a top three-point shooter. Yeah, he, he shot like three a game or something. Yeah, I mean, 2. 37% for his career. Draymond game. Green yeah. just passed him in the all-time three-point Total three-point, three point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe, I believe Richard Jefferson is, is right above him, too. I'm going to say Richard Jefferson's one of the best three, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so what was Larry Bird good at? But I think that's. Larry Bird was one of the greatest players ever. Yeah. He was a he was a he was a great shooter. First of all, he was a great yeah, shooter. Yeah, incredible passer. Yeah, insane um, passer. He's he's also to me like when I watch because I watch I watch full games and then I watch I, of course I watch the highlight montages yeah. that we all watch. I love watching full games on YouTube. It's one of the greatest gifts ever of YouTube. Yeah, but he's another guy who like defied a definition. Yeah, to me. Yeah, he defied a definition. Yeah, Jordan defied a definition. Yeah, he defied a definition. They're transcendent players. Yeah. Transcendent. That's how I look at him. But not not a good three-point shooter. No, he's a, he, was good a good, shooter? he was a good three-point shooter. But one of the best shooters ever? But Mad Dog that day said to me, but Larry Bird won a three-point contest. I'm like, are you serious? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you heard what J.J. Redick had to say. First of all, <clears throat> it's, it's important that I say this. J.J. Redick was capping over there. He was just capping. Um... JJ actually says some other things amongst those things was when he said that the nineties was not more physical than the present day NBA. That was one of the comments he made that had Dominique Wilkins call him out and essentially say, you're an idiot. He was suggesting that the nineties or really today is just as physical as it was in the nineties. That's what J.J. Reddick said. And he was talking about the freedom of movement and he brought up highlight tapes of of, of, of Larry Bird coming off a pin down, talking about the spacing that he had there. He's like, you know where you're going to tell me that it was. That's what he was saying. And a lot of NBA legends came out to basically tell him, bro, you need to chill out. You embarrassing yourself right now. Those were one of the things that he said. Now. One of the things that people like myself who don't play basketball, who didn't play basketball uh, hear whenever they're talking, you know, sports or speaking to people like Gilbert Arenas and others, they always tell you, listen, um, there's no way you understand this thing at the level that we do. So therefore, whatever you say is wrong or inversely, whatever we say is right whenever you and I are having a conversation because I played in the NBA and you did not But here's the problem. In the case of what J.J. Redick said, J.J. Redick played in the NBA. I didn't play in the NBA, but I vehemently disagreed with him for the same reasons that all of those other NBA legends disagree with him. So how do you reconcile that event just now? How is how, how do we reconcile what just took place, what I just explained to you? I didn't play in the NBA. Dominic Wilkins, uh, 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 Jerry West, Bob Cousy, and all of these guys, they played in the NBA, and I was able to come to the same conclusion that they did. So how did I do that if I didn't play in the NBA? What 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 did I use to be able to figure that out? I used my brain, and I used my eyes. But what we keep hearing is that whatever an NBA player says is correct, but here's the problem. We always get NBA players constantly disagreeing with one another. So who's right and who's wrong? Or is it that you're always right when you're speaking to somebody, they didn't play in the NBA. Well, that would be patently absurd. But that's what these guys are saying. That's what these guys are saying. He said that. And according to the people that are propagating and promoting that viewpoint, then JJ should be right. But as it turns out, they're legends that were actually better than him that are saying, no, he's wrong. He is wrong. Now, back to the plumber's comment. When JJ Reddick brought up the, the, the thing of them being plumbers and all of that, Let's cut the BS. What he what he essentially was saying was those guys were not as good as players today. Period. End of story. Period. End of story. Period. End of story. That's why he threw that out. 
he wasn't throwing out their job at, uh, uh, occupation just to inform the audience that these guys were plumbers and firemen. No, he was saying that these guys were basically nobodies. Now, here's a problem. If J.J. Redick is correct about what he's saying, that in fact that those players were playing an inferior brand of basketball, basketball compared to players today, then help me understand why was it that when Kobe Bryant was growing up, one of the people he learned, the, learned a lot about in terms of scoring and play style and all of that was from Jerry West. How do we explain that? How do we explain that? Now, some people say, well, Jerry West is an isolated player. Great players would be good in any era. Okay, fantastic. So why can't we say the same today? That there's some great players today and then the rest of these guys aren't really that good. Well, no, we can't say that because then you'd be using my argument against me. That can't work. Kobe learned learned a lot about learned a lot about basketball from uh from from uh what's his name from Jerry West. Have you ever heard of a guy called Alex Eng English before? These guys weren't any good. Like, are you kidding me? So JJ, man, I think this is a fight that uh for whatever reason I think he he stepped in it, but he 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 doubled down. I don't know why, because I couldn't see. I don't I don't know the people that would agree with JJ right because all the legends, all the top seventy five guys disagree with him. All of the top seventy five guys disagree with him. All of them. That's the Jerry West, the Dominiques, the 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 Bob. They all disagree with him. He's by himself. It's just basically role players and one or two time all stars that agree with him. Let me get into this topic here. So it looks like there's a little bit of drama taking place at uh, ESPN, especially on ESPN First Take. So what happened yesterday on ESPN First Take and all throughout the network on Get Up and other shows, but on ESPN First Take. They had a, a panel of Molly, Car Molly Karam, Tim Legler, uh, and Jason Williams. And during that panel, they were discussing the events that had occurred between the Golden State Warriors and the Orlando Magic when Draymond Green got tossed, <coughs> excuse me, when he got ejected out of the game in the first quarter uh, with about four minutes to go in the first quarter. So what happened? Um, he got ejected. Draymond Green went out there and made a comment or explained why he did it. Um, so they were reacting to that. In the midst of all of that, Jay Williams then begins to disclose the fact that, um, you know, how he knows Stephen Curry and how privately Stephen Curry seems to be frustrated at the way things are going. And then as he was speaking, he got to the point where he was talking about Stephen Curry's legacy. Uh, and he was essentially saying that, listen, there's some folks close to me that uh, are prominent figures in the NBA community. They were basically asking the question, what about Stephen Curry? Why isn't he able to reel in uh, Draymond Green? Why can't he find a way to curtail Draymond Green's emotions? But apparently what happened was, as Jay Williams was saying that, um, he feels as if the network cut, his, uh, cut that segment short. And what ended up happening was people then started going out there and saying, Jay Williams is the one talking about Stephen Curry's legacy. So what we want to do is we want to play the first audio of Jay Williams yesterday on ESPN First Take discussing this. And then we're going to come back and then get into what he said uh, after the show had uh, concluded. So take a listen to what he said here on Undis on uh, ESPN First Take yesterday. Yeah, right. At this stage of his career, agree. at 36 years old, for the numbers he's putting up to drag this team in that position, he deserves better. And one of the things that's happening about it is it, I'm getting texts from people that I really value their decision, right? High level people. And what these texts are reading is, well, how about the leadership of Stephen Curry? That's where these conversations are going. And in my brain, right, processing information, Molly. Wait, I what start, do you mean? How about the leadership of Stephen Curry? They're calling this. Steph out? Yes, oh. right? For him not controlling Draymond. So in my, in my brain, the way I process is that is because I know Steph, I spent time around Steph, we were talking about this during Get Up. We wish we could have a camcorder in, in Steph's car, right? Yeah. We, like all yeah. the things that Steph would be yeah. saying right. to his wife and right. now he's frustrated about because he's one of the most competitive dudes you'll ever meet. No doubt. Draymond Green is diminishing the ultimate legacy of how people are looking at the leadership of Stephen Curry. That's what's happening I will, right now. The only thing I will say, Jay, I think that's in a a group of people. I agree. I don't think that's like the universal mentality, right, is to think about Steph. And where are you in this, Steph, at all? I do think there are people that are always going to be devil's advocate. They're contrarians. They're going to raise Let this me, kind of question about yeah. somebody. What, to me, that's an ultimate statement. What does this I don't, have I don't, to do with Steph, though? Like, what should Steph well, be doing here? What are, what are these critics saying? These people are saying that Steph should not. Well, look, 
I disagree with him. Let me yeah, state that yeah, for yeah. the record, right? Because I know him. I know how things have been addressed yeah. internally multiple times. But what happens is perception is reality for a lot of people. A lot of people aren't familiar with things that are happening behind closed doors. So there's a tendency when you hear them talk about it, people just keep tiptoeing around it instead of calling Draymond Green out publicly. Now, yeah. I get that, right? Like, I understand that. That's not the case because we know what's going on, Legs. But that's what's happening, even if it is a smaller niche of people. Like, these are high-level people now that are starting to look at it that way. And by the way, like, that to me is on Draymond. Yeah. That's on Draymond because I think Steph is taking the higher can we road play the, and how to deal with it. Can we play the Steph sound again? Yeah, Cass, can that's we, about as strong as you're ever going to get Can we play from that really yeah, quick? That's, that's the way Steph deals right. with it. So you heard what he had to say. So apparently what happened was... After the show had finished, I'm assuming that people started reaching out to him like, yo, bro, what are you talking about? This and this and this. And Jay Williams was probably like, well, wait a minute. I didn't say that's what I felt. He said that's what people are saying, but I don't believe that this is affecting Stephen Curry's legacy. So what happened? He took to Instagram Live to basically go out there and call out ESPN first take for cutting his segment short to basically stir up controversy. And now people are getting at Jay Williams all over the internet talking about, yo, bro, why are you taking a shot at Stephen Curry's legacy? So for those of you who didn't hear what he had to say after the show had ended, I want to play it for you now and then come back and give you guys our thoughts. Take a listen to what he had to say here. So first take, this is what we're going to do. My segment got clipped off when I said that Draymond Green is diminishing the ultimate legacy of Steph Curry. The reason why I said that, and on the back end of what I said, was that I had people that were texting me, talking about the leadership of Steph, which if the clip had continued, which it did not, but if it had continued, what I said is that I do not believe that to be the case. That I know who Steph is and I know how he operates and it doesn't do him any good speaking publicly when you hear about all the conversations they're having internally. But once again, the clip makes it sound as if I am the one that believes that his legacy is being diminished when inevitably I said that I'm getting texts from people that are saying that when I do not believe that. So we're just clarifying, clearing things up because now when I'm getting a lot of people adding me saying that this is stupid, why would Jay will say, that's not what I said. I do not believe it's diminishing the legacy of Steph Curry. His legacy speaks for itself. I'm saying outside interpretations from people that I'm getting texts from are saying that to me. And I wanted to dispel that. So let's just set things straight for what they are. So you heard what Jay Williams had to say. What are my thoughts about this? First of all, <laughs> um, does this surprise me? No, it doesn't. Why? Because all of these people are trying to make money. All of them, right? They're trying to make money and they know that controversy sells. You know, here's what's interesting. Um, some people come to our channel and say, oh, you know, all you guys was talk about drama stories. Where does this happen and where is that happening? You know, you guys are not really talking about the X's and O's of basketball. Number one, I don't know why I need to be taking advice from you guys. Number one. But number two, let's address the point that you brought up. Here's what gets me for the people that go out there and say this, for example, about our 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 platform. You then decide to go to their platform to see, well, what kind of content are they producing? And you look up and you're seeing videos of was Michael Jordan on uh, on uh, performance enhancing drugs. You look up videos breaking this get so and so gets totally blah slammed and blah and obliter and I'm like, hmm, something interesting is happening here. These guys are saying that they don't like the content that we produce, but then you go to their platforms and they're doing the exact same thing, and then it, then it becomes apparently clear that what's happening is the following uh number one they don't like our our content our platform so therefore they want us to stop doing what works for us but then they want to copy exactly what we're doing and hopefully it works out for them but then expect me to take them seriously like how where, where did they do that at where did they do that at uh, I digress. In the case of ESPN, it's not the first time you can see certain ESPN thumbnails, f fire alarms going off, heated exchange things. Nothing happened, right? But they're trying to sell controversy because they know that that's what people want to see. Period. End of story. Now, uh, Jay Williams was probably caught in the, caught in the crosshairs, but here's what's interesting: the first audio we played was a clip from ESPN First Take. Now, 
what is unclear to me is that yes they ended it they ended it you know abruptly they didn't play the full segment what's unclear to me is that did he say more after that clip was ended uh you know after, at the end of that clip and that's really what he's talking about because i only heard what he said on that clip i didn't see it live on television so i don't know but for him to go online and then immediately call out the network and the show that he was just on for basically going out there and making it look like he was the one that was getting at Stephen Curry and not people are coming for him. Uh, it lets you know that he was very, very upset about it. But I think that was outside the control of uh, Jay Williams. But nevertheless, for him to have the balls to go out there and say something, it means that he was really upset about it. Um, as you guys know, Paul Pierce was one of LeBron's rivals throughout his NBA career. And he's been one of the more critical uh, voices on LeBron. And he's publicly admitted that um, himself. And usually when you hear Paul Pierce talking about basketball in terms of who's the GOAT, he's always said Michael Jordan. But then something interesting happened. Just today, Paul Pierce went on Undisputed. And I saw... The, at the bottom of the screen, you know, if LeBron wins the championship this year, is he the GOAT? So I click on the, 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 the video to see what was being said. And it turns out that it was actually Paul Pierce that was making this point. And I said to myself, as a matter of fact, I went to the channel and I posted on a community section about an hour or so ago. And I said, now Paul Pierce is saying if LeBron wins the chip this year, he's the GOAT. Can these people just make up their minds already? And I was like, where is all of this even coming from? So Paul goes out there and says that. But I think what he wasn't prepared for was the fact that Skip Bayless was ready for him. And after he said that, uh, Skip Bayless went back at him with some cold, hard facts about why he thinks uh, he is 100% wrong. Uh, so for those of you who didn't hear what Paul Pierce had to say in Skip Bayless's rebuttal to him, I want to play it for you now and then to come back and give you guys our thoughts. Take a listen to this here. Yeah, well, as you know, Skip, I am probably one of LeBron's biggest critic. You are. And I and I, I will say this. This would be his greatest feat. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen him come back from 3-1 on a 73-win Warriors team, but come on, he's 39 years old. The Lakers are in the ninth slot. No seed under, let me say what, the sixth seed Rockets in 94-95 have won a title. So, if that's the case, he's going to have two of the greatest feats ever accomplished, ever accomplished in NBA history, which is coming back from a 3-1 deficit in the finals, which has never been done, and also a team below the sixth seed winning a championship. Now, if that doesn't tell you goat of all goats, then I don't know what does, despite what Jordan has done. This, and then you look at the numbers across the board. He's broken every record. All-star, regular season, minutes, points. I mean, at some point, you just got to say, good Lord, mm. what more does this guy have to do? And I'm one of those guys. So even you would give up and give in? I, I would give up and give. All at right. that point, this, this, is, this is a 39-year-old. This is on the level of Tom Brady in his 40s winning Super Bowls. I mm. mean, I, I just have to just say, forget it. <laughs> you're not i've never called him the king before you're the king wow you're the king see so when when i look at the totality to your point rachel i i give you longer way better because michael really only played 13 seasons because because it, it pretty much ended in 1998 in mm -hmm. chicago right i know he had these two sort of ceremonial seasons in but washington i count that okay if you get on the court all right but and he, you put yourself out there it yeah, counts but but he took I lived in three washington years off D -D i know in I know that time did. he was there i promise he was in the building with me he was okay. on the court okay he was but he took three years off at the prime of his life because decision, they pushed his though. coach out the back door that's a decision okay and then he comes back not in great shape he the, the great tim grover didn't wasn't able to flip that switch for him when, when they got to washington and it it was kind of hard on the eyes it was hard to watch so i give you 
longer, but just because you play longer at a higher level does not make you better because it's just hard to compete with six finals, six and oh, six MVPs. Mm -hmm. It's hard to compete with 10 scoring titles to only one for LeBron. It's hard to compete with Michael Jordan actually won defensive player of the year. Okay. So in, in it, it's, it, it's hard to compete with a Michael Jordan who had no epic failures at all in his playoff run. There's no epic fail. And I look at LeBron against you guys in 2010. Mm -hmm. He had, listen, that game three in your building, that, that, was, that was sensational. I said, my God. And then remember what started happening in game four, five, and six? Yep. It got so bad, his owner, Dan Gilbert, accused him of quitting in the series. <laughs> well, did anybody ever accuse Michael Jeffrey Jordan of quitting? Well, no, mm -hmm. they, they didn't. In one in, in overtime in 2016, and it just, it's it's like I I don't know. I, Michael has none of these these taints on his legacy, and now you're just going to wipe the slate clean because he, the last championship he won was the bubble championship, yeah. and it was it felt Mickey Mouseish to me. It I felt bubbleicious. You were there, Rachel. You were say, trapped in that bubble I would, also. I would, I would argue, and, and we've had this discussion mm -hmm. before, a, any title one in the bubble is more impressive to me, having been there okay, than but, less, but I get it. But, but several teams, up. starting with the Clippers, just just couldn't take it. They, they just they just that's wanted to go home. About how hard yeah, it is. I know. You accomplished something that's pretty much looks so unattainable. Like coming back from 3-1, yep. no one's ever done that. Okay. A, the, arguably the greatest team at the time, at the time, yep. in history, in history of the league, 73 win team, okay. you're up, you're down 3-1, okay. 73 wins. Think about that. Okay, this is this is equivalent to Buster Douglas beating Mike Tyson. I mean, I'm, Jesus, I'm what are the odds that of that? I'm not sure. This, this, the, this is the Cavs were Buster Douglas. Lennox Lewis. I mean, the yeah. odds of that. Okay, but Rachel sang the praises yesterday of Draymond and how much he means to Steph and the chemistry, the rare chemistry that they have mm -hmm. on the floor. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he got suspended for One games. game. Okay, you but, but two it more seemed, games it at seemed it with to Draymond? flip. Yes. Okay, but it flipped their script. It, it they lost momentum and they could not get it back. Let me ask you, Steve, yeah. what does he have to do to catch Michael? From, say he plays another four years, can he catch well, Michael? He's lost six finals and Michael so went six no, and oh. Okay, no like, like this. Listen, this is just me. After the 2011 finals, after I witnessed what I witnessed, I just said, that's over. It's you over. you can't bring that back to me now because Michael had none of those. Yeah, they got swept by the Celtics. But in, you remember what happened in game one? It went to overtime, but he had 63. And Larry Bird says, I, I think I just saw God disguised as Michael Jordan. Yeah, God disguised as Michael Jordan. God, Is there anything God he disguised? can do? Well, <laughs> I don't know, can he play 10 more years? Or I, I guess maybe <laughs> oh, after 10 years, I'd finally have to say, well, this is not human anymore, right? <laughs> it's already not yeah. human. Yeah. So you heard the exchange there. My only thing is, listen, if Paul Pierce thinks that LeBron James is the GOAT, have at it. The only thing I don't understand is why so many people in media flip-flop on this issue. You hear one person say one thing today, you hear them the next day saying a totally different, just just pick like, what's up with all of this inconsistency? It's the consistency, same thing with Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett one day was saying Michael Jordan's the GOAT, the next day he's arguing for why LeBron James could be the GOAT. I'm like, bro, which one is it? Which one is it, really? Which one is it? Now, to the conversation that's being said here, uh, Skip Bayless basically said at the end that, listen, that ship sailed for him uh, after the 2011 finals. And as a matter of fact, someone left a comment under the post that we put on our channel where they were like, what are you telling me that there's no current players actively playing uh, that could challenge Jordan for the greatest player of all time um, legacy uh, uh, title? And I'm like, as of now, I don't believe so. Jordan, <clears throat> Jordan has a lot of these guys beat on multiple fronts. He has a lot of them beat on the court and a lot of them beat off the court or all of them beat on the court and off the court. On the court, there's no one's resume that you can put up to Michael Jordan and you can say is more impressive. There's no one. There's no one. And to Skip's point, point, you can't point out moments where Jordan just collapsed. You can't. You can't. Right? You can't. And I'm sorry. I'm giving the guy more credit that won more chips in less tries he didn't need 
10, 11 tries. He did it every time he went. That says a lot about the guy. For, for, for God's sakes, Jordan never even went to a game seven. Are you kidding me? If that doesn't say domination, then, 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 then what does? So his resume in terms of the scoring titles, the defensive teams, the defensive player of the year, the stretches he went on, the multiple three-peats, uh, on the court, you can, and of course, the way he played, just looking at him play basketball, it's clear to see just by watching him play that this is the best player ever. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Uh, I've seen pretty much all these guys play basketball. No one moved in a way that Jordan, it was freaky. Even when Jordan jumped and he left, it was weird. Jordan looked like he was levitating off the ground when he was, it was, it's freaky, freaky. There's no other player I've seen that can make me say, whoa, wait a minute. What am I watching here? Uh, so Jordan wins ev in every single category with the stats, with the accomplishments, with the eye test. It's a no brainer. And then when you come off the court is also a no brainer. I didn't understand what Skip Bayless said off the court. It's not even close. I, uh, uh, you, Jordan loses there. Well, how does he lose off the court? He has the bigger, the biggest brand in terms of basketball. His shoes, I'll sell everybody. Everybody wears them. Even the biggest Jordan haters buy Jordans. Uh, that's number one. In terms of popularity, it ain't even close. In terms of uh, in terms of making people interested in the game, it's not even close. So if you're telling me that LeBron took some political stances and that that's what makes him better than Jordan, I 100% disagree. Because if you're saying that because of LeBron's political stances, you're telling me that I need to agree with whatever political position LeBron James takes. And therefore, that makes him better off the court than Jordan. What if I don't agree with LeBron's views? What if I don't? What if I don't? I don't really support any of these candidates, but LeBron was in these guys pushing us, pushing us to vote for Hillary Clinton and all of these people. Why would that make him greater than Jordan? At least Jordan said, you make your own decision. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. You vote for whoever the hell you want to vote for. LeBron James opened a school. So what? That makes him a better per like, but Jordan gives it the various foundations. So I'm not buying that. Those are just people doing things in their life. So I don't just because LeBron takes a political stance here or votes with this particular party or whatever that makes him better. I 100% disagree because there are some incongruities in his positions off the off the court. You're just picking something to hold on to. I give you guys a, 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 I give you guys an example of this, and this is why you should never use this as an argument. You can say, okay, LeBron is a Democrat, or he says this. You know, go support this candidate. Does this and this and this and this talks about rights and talks about black issues and the blacks this, black that, and black that. But he supports Nike. When the Daryl Morey situation happened in China, when he was like, listen, uh, we're against this stuff happening with people being taken. LeBron was, in fact, he was upset that Daryl Morey even brought that up. So what happened to this righteous, righteous indignation for justice and what's right? You can find it. You can get a peep out of him. Hello? Is this on the quote, Rob Parker? So don't, I don't buy into all of that. Oh, because so-and-so was politically active on that i don't buy into it people are just giving their views and whatever your political leanings are you could be pro trump pro whoever that doesn't mean that just because you're taking a position and saying vote for this guy or vote for this person therefore i need to say hey you know what man you're doing a much better job than jordan because you're telling people who to vote for no i'm not listening to any athlete to uh in terms of if i'm thinking of making a decision of who i vote for i'm not checking out to see what jordan or this guy said or that i'm thinking for myself i don't need a celebrity to tell me who I need to vote for. I think I should be able to make that decision as an informed adult as on my own. So uh, I don't buy that. And people try to use that. Skip tried to use that. And I 100% disagree. Because if you're saying that, then you, that means that everything LeBron has said off the court in terms of his political views are correct. And I disagree with that 100%. No one is 100% correct on their views. These are just my thoughts. Now, of course, it's going to offend some people, whatever. 